Good morning to Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. Welcome back to Houston, at least virtually. <laughs> yeah. It's always good to be Houston, no matter how you get there. Yeah, right, because in 2018, you opened and closed the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and we all kept saying, is Trisha going to be there? You think she's going to be there? And that black truck came riding out in the middle of the field, and there you were. So you surprised 75,577 fans and broke a record doing it. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. You all are no strangers to breaking records and winning awards, but you know, sometimes people think that it's always been that way for you, but really for both of you, you, you were in lifelong training to do what you do. And Garth, I'm going to start with you. Youngest of six kids grew up in a family where music was important. Yeah, very, very much important. Uh, my mom uh, sang for Capitol records, her sister, the one girl out of the six kids that so she was the only girl who was tougher, had to be tougher than nails, uh, was one of the greatest guitar players, one of the greatest blues singers. And so uh, I was lucky enough to have it kind of throughout our entire family. Yeah, speaking of being tough, you went to um, college on a track scholarship. Being a musician kind of helped set the, or being a, an athlete helped set the stage for you because uh, as, a, as an athlete, you know that you got to get up and do it again, even when you lose. In your music career, there are times where you were told, nope. Yeah, all the time. So I love the whole athletic music kind of thing because you're on tour with these guys and girls. And so you just kind of run it like uh, an athletic team does. We we have team dinners, uh, we have team talks. And uh, if we win, everybody wins. And if we lose, it's a, it's a solemn ride uh, on the way home on the bus. <laughs> and then you but to work to make sure you don't lose the next time. You win a lot. You have set records that have challenged the Beatles and Elvis, you know, number one selling solo artist in U.S. history, 157 million albums sold. The list goes on and on and on. All right. Um, I just have to ask you, this is my own curiosity thing. When you're singing like Friends in Low Places, do you just want to laugh at all the people out there who are going, I've got friends in low places? Because we try to get as low as we can to, you know, kind of match you. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> well, well, I've done it's this song a number of times. <laughs> okay. It's the, best feeling. it's the best feeling in the world. I'd, I'd just tell you right now. Uh, Patricia Lynn, born in Georgia. I yes, can't tell you. Yes, I can't tell you how many friends I had who were named Patricia that suddenly went to Trisha when you came onto the scene. You'd be like, hey, Patricia, uh, that's Trisha. They changed her name because <laughs> of you. <laughs> Music, you say, was a calling. Yeah, I never really remember a time when I said, hey, I think I'd like to do this. I, I'm i kind of a dramatic kid and I was born like, in my mind, I was already Cher at like five years old. So I had a, I had a plan um, and uh, I just always, I felt like this is who I am, how do I do it? And I didn't have any clue. I didn't have any family members who did this. I was in a small town in Georgia. I just felt like Nashville was the place that I needed to go if I wanted to try to make my dreams come true. And I moved here when I was 19, I finished college and I just didn't, I didn't have a backup plan because I didn't know what I didn't, there was nothing else I wanted to do this badly. So I'm very grateful that I get to do this on this level. Um, I would be at your holiday in five nights a week. Otherwise, I mean, I would be doing however I could do. Um, and I played those gigs and they were good gigs, you know, so um, I, I really blessed that I get to do this. Yeah, you had that fabled story when you move off to Nashville and you got that internship where you're doing uh, backup singing and doing demos. In fact, you sang backup on one of Garth rec Garth's records early on? I did. I sang, um, I, I did, I didn't sing on his first record, but I think I sang on every record after that. My, but my very first backup singing on an album was a Kathy Mateo record. And I to hear myself just singing harmony on the radio, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah. And Garth, you Jason. promised you promised to help her if you made it big. Well, we promised to help each other. I mean, we we were both uh, kind of like a, we met doing demo sessions together. And, and when you do demo sessions, it's like 10 bucks or whatever. But every little dollar counts, you know, when you're trying to scrape them. We're working. I'm working three jobs. You're working two or three jobs uh, when we met. And so we just said, hey, good luck to each other. And we didn't know how much we were going to see each other then starting because that's how it happens here in Nashville is. There's a group, and the, the old guys, Joe Diffie, Martina McBride, uh, Faith, all of them were in that same kind of group that we all were in, so that kind of a class. So it's um, it was pretty cool, and and, and I got to tell you, what I love about Trisha Yearwood is I was a fan long before uh, I ever got to be lucky enough to be married to her, and I, I'm still uh, the fan uh, ten times I was then. Now, just because she's like. 
I don't know, man. She's like, time is a friend to her. So everything about her gets better with time. Uh, you know, both of you had been married before, but one of the things that you say is that you made a concerted effort or a different effort to make sure that you two stayed married. You travel together, you do things together. Uh, and is that part of what makes it stay together? I think so. I mean, we also have knew each other for a long time before we ever went out on a date, you know, and so we, we have a really nice foundation of friendship that a lot of times you don't get in a relationship. Sometimes you get down the road and then you then you get to know each other and you're like, hey, maybe I should have, maybe this was a mistake. So we had that foundation. So we knew who each other was for a long time before we ever went out on a date. And I think that is really important. And yeah, the being together, I mean, it is that simple is that you can't expect to keep a relationship going if you're not together. Yeah. It's basic, it's relationship 101. And so we, we have, we're lucky to be in a place where we can travel together, we can tour together. If one of us is doing something, the other one can be there for the other one. And that's just what we do. Garth, you yeah, proposed, I mean, uh, that you proposed sorry. on stage. Was there any other way to do that? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, her dad uh, was there. Her dad and mom was there. My dad was there. And uh, I had asked all that. Everyone knew Patricia. And so uh, that was uh, pretty cool. They were unveiling statues out at Buck Owens' place. And they said these statues would stand for 200 years. I said, well, okay, if you can, can you put a wedding ring on this finger? Uh, that would be her wedding ring. That, uh, uh, that'd be the wedding ring that I'd wear as her husband uh, if I proposed to her that night. And it kind of, um, the ring is still there and the ring is still here. So. Uh, all right, Trisha, you were um, embarking on, on one of your other passions, one of the other things that you grew up with, and that is, of course, food, your Food Network series. You say both your mom and dad were good cooks. You look forward to that Sunday meal. Uh, your mom passed away before the show started, and you say sharing those recipes and stories was like therapy for you. Yeah, it was. I mean, my dad actually passed away right before the first cookbook was written, and so um all of this for my sister and i is really our way to keep them alive i mean every time i make something that my mother made or my dad made they're with me and actually there's some things there's some classic recipes that my that my mom's that i really couldn't make when she was alive and i think that I, and when she passed she decided to all right it's okay if you know how to make this now so um I'm, i still make those things and i can it it, it brings me joy even though they're gone, that is one of the ways in which I really keep them with me all the time. Yeah, and I think we've had a renaissance around the table and around the kitchen and food now, but it's much more important than just nourishment for our soul. It nourishes us in a different way because it's through tradition. Yeah, I've always said it's it feeds my soul, music feeds my soul, but, but the whole food thing is about the people that you love and cooking for people that you love. And, and being together. And the, and there's a, you know, it's it's also really nice for young people to learn how to cook because it's a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. It is something like you make that and it tastes good. And you're like, I can do this. It's not as daunting and hard as you think. And if you mess up, you, you order takeout, you know, okay. it's like, what's the word? <laughs> right, and put, it, and put it in your own bowls and begin, pretend that you made it. All right, um, speaking of another tradition, holiday music, you're doing a holiday concert event. How important is it this year compared to other years to go back to that tradition and to hear those holiday songs? Well, it's, it's you know, it's, it brings you comfort. We were, we were just out uh, for an award show out in Los Angeles. And the question was, do you think the pandemic will make songwriters write songs that kind of affect us for the future? And I got to tell you right off the cuff for me, what I found was I'm going back to the older songs that brought me comfort in, in this time. So this makes pretty cool kind of a completing of the circle with the holiday special. There's going to be some songs that are, you know, gosh, I would guess 100 years, 200 years old, <laughs> all the way to songs that are brand new that uh, kind of bring us together while we are apart. That's the important thing is, is to be together apart uh, during this pandemic, especially the holiday season for everybody's safety. Yeah. And uh, kind of just have an escape and hopefully some fun uh, in a year that's kind of been kind of trying. I'm sure we'll have fun. But you know, the other thing I think is gonna be effective as well is that we're so used to these big, crazy, wild productions. This is gonna be simple. No wardrobe changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just, uh, this is just the truth. And, and there's gonna be a lot of flaws, but uh, we're lucky enough to play for an audience that uh, lets us just kind of- Be us. Yeah, be us. And if we fall on our face, they'll pick us up and, and, and encourage us to try again. So we're very, very lucky to be in the position. Yeah. Well, there's no real set list there. And so it's gonna feel more like we're oh. in your living room with you and we're all just having a good time. 
That's what we hope. So you probably won't be sweating as much as we will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to bring my karaoke machine over. Trisha, you make that pot roast and mashed potatoes with gravy. I'll bring some collard greens and we'll all have a fun time. Oh, yes. You are speaking my language. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for bringing us this gift with this uh, Christmas special. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you. Thank Love you. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. All right, you can catch Garth and Trisha live, a holiday concert event Sunday, December 20th at 7.30 p.m. right here on KHOU 11, as well as streaming live on CBS All Access. You can find more information, including links to Garth's latest album, Fun, and Trisha's latest album, Every Girl, on greatdayhouston.com.